Hi, welcome to Cooking with Christina and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making a roasted corn and quinoa salad. Um, it's also going to have chicken in it, some kale, some tomatoes, cabbage to give it a nice crunch, um, and a bunch of other goodies that we will get into a little bit later on. First off, we're going to start with our corn because we're going to roast the corn on the grill so that you get a little bit of a smoky, um, crunchy kind of flavor. So what we're going to do first is we're going to peel the corn back. Um, so we're going to peel the husk away from the corn. So we're just going to peel that back and what you're going, oops, I did not mean to rip that off. What we're going to do is you're just going to take the hair off of the corn so we can just put that back on there and that should be fine and just do the other side pull that off and you're going to pull out all that hair so get all get as close to the bottom as you can without tearing it off obviously this one has a really thick husk so it's just going to kind of tear off but that's okay you can kind of just patch it back together because it just needs to rest on it because we don't want to put the corn right on the grill we want a little bit of layer so we can peel back a couple of layers um, so I'm going to leave about two layers of husk on there. So that is ready to go on the grill. It's okay if it doesn't cover it up all the way. Um, you might just get a couple of burnt little pieces. So what you're going to do is you're just going to place this on your grill on low to medium heat. And you're just going to keep on turning it for about a half an hour until um, the little kernels on the inside get a little bit darker. And then the, um, the outer stuff is going to get pretty burnt and crispy. So, um, once you put this on the grill and grill it for a little while, your finished product is going to look like this. So I've already peeled it back a little bit. So what I'm going to do is, and then you can see this part got a little bit burnt, but that's okay. Um, we just won't use those little parts. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take a knife and cut this part off, just cause you're not gonna need that. All right. And then you're just gonna stand it up and you're just gonna cut down just like you would for a toothless eight-year-old. I'm gonna do this for three ears of corn, so I'm gonna roast three ears of corn and cut all of them off. So I've already done that for two of them, and then I'm just gonna crumble the ones that have stuck together. Alrighty. Moving on, we are going to um, grill some chicken for this. So um, what you're going to do for the chicken is you're just going to um, rub in any dry rub that you want to. I used a um, taco, taco seasoning that I made myself, um, so which consists of cumin, chili powder, onion powder, garlic powder, and a little bit of um, crushed red pepper. You can use whatever you would like. So I've already grilled that. Um, so as you can see, I've got some nice grill marks on there. So then I'm just gonna chop these up into little chunks, little bite-sized pieces. And for this recipe, I use um, two chicken breasts, but if you're making a um, larger recipe of it, you can do more chicken breasts, or if you want it to be a heartier meal, um, you can put um, more chicken breast in there as well. Alrighty, so now that I've got my chicken cut, I'm just gonna set that aside for when we wanna add it later. So I've already prepared some quinoa, so I'm just gonna add in. I've done, I did one cup of um, dry quinoa and two cups of water, so that's just how my package said to um, prepare it. So I'm just going to um, throw that in there. It makes quite a bit, so I'm, I'm only gonna use about two cups of the quinoa. There's one, and let's do a little bit more. So, so maybe almost three cups. All right, so there's our quinoa. Then you're gonna want one red pepper. So I'm just gonna chop this up into bite-sized pieces as well. Um, I just like to keep my um, 
piece is kind of uniform just so that when you take a bite of the salad that you get the same texture basically um, or same size of everything. So I'm going to leave them kind of big and just chop them rough. All right, and I'm gonna saute these up a little bit just to bring out their flavor. And I'm gonna also saute them with a little bit of onion. So I'm gonna grab some more onions here. And these are also from our garden. So that's really fun to see them grow. Um, they were tiny itty bitty seeds actually. So really, really fun to see how they came to be a big old onion. Or I guess not very big, but. Right, and I'm just gonna roughly chop these as well. I'm just gonna throw those in there. It doesn't have to be too many. So yeah, I'd say about a fourth of a cup of chopped onion. So if you don't have two little tiny onions, you can use about a fourth of a cup of regular chopped onion. All right, so I'm gonna turn this to about medium heat and I'm gonna add in about just not even a tablespoon of olive oil. So just a tiny bit. And we're just gonna get those covered and just saute them just a tiny bit until um, the onions are not quite translucent, but um, just a little bit and the peppers are just a little bit more tender than just a raw crispiness. All right, while those are sauteing, I'm going to get our kale ready. So um, the kale, I'm just going to tear it apart. So um, as most of you probably know, kale comes on these big, thick, long stems. So I'm going to um, tear it off of the stem. So I'm not gonna use the stem just because it's really thick and kind of woody. Um, so I'm just going to tear that off and I'm gonna tear it into small pieces. And I'm actually gonna saute this up a little bit because then it, um, makes it a little bit softer just because kale does have a tendency to be almost sharp. Um, so when you swallow it, um, if you saute it a little bit, it softens it up so that it's not so, um, not so crispy and not so hard to swallow. So I've got about two cups of kale here. Um, so if you want more, you can, and I'm just gonna rinse this. All right, and then I'm just gonna add this in with the peppers and the onion. While all of that is sauteing, I am going to work on our cabbage. Um, I like to put cabbage in here just because it does give it a nice um, crispy texture to the salad, um, but then also it has a nice um, taste to it too. Um, cabbage kind of has a sulfury taste, and so it, it just plays really nicely with the quinoa just because it's real earthy. Um, so yeah, I really like to use it. But if you want, if you're not a huge cabbage fan, you can use just like some romaine lettuce or something else that's gonna give the salad a little bit of crispiness. So I've got about two cups of chopped cabbage. All right, next we're going to add in some beans. So I've already um, drained these beans so they don't have any of the liquid that they were in the can with, um, just because that liquid usually has a little bit of salt in it. And I wanna be able to control the amount of salt that I put in. Um, and these are, these are black beans, but you can use pinto beans or um, kidney beans, but I like black beans just because this does have a nice um, Spanish flavor. Next, we're gonna add in our roasted corn. So I'm just gonna add that in. And then we're going to add in um, some tomatoes. So I'm gonna chop these tomatoes up. So I have about a cup of chopped tomatoes. So I'm gonna add in about a cup. Good. All right, so let's see how the kale and the peppers and onions are doing. All 
All right, now that I've sauteed the um, peppers, onion, and the kale, um, see that the kale has wilted just a tiny bit, so it's a, it gives a little bit more, um, and it has turned a lot of brighter green, as you can see. So it's kind of like broccoli, um, that it turns green when it gets warm. So really pretty colors. So I'm just going to pour that in there. Alrighty. And then we're going to put in our chicken. And then last, we are going to put in our chipotle lime sauce. I've already prepared this lime sauce, but you can um, check out my video of how to make this sauce um, labeled as my chipotle lime sauce. So I'm going to put about a cup on here. You can add more um, if you want to, but I like to just give it a little bit of a coating so it's not too, too much of a flavor. All right, so we're just gonna mix all this together. Make sure you get all the quinoa at the bottom. All right, and then last but not least, uh, we are gonna add in a little bit of cilantro. Cilantro gives it just a nice, cool flavor. Um, I know that there are some people that absolutely hate cilantro and others that really love it. My mother is one that absolutely hates cilantro, so if she's watching, I'm sorry. All right, so I'm just gonna sprinkle some on there and then mix it in. All righty, so now we are ready to serve. All right, look at all those colors, it's so great. It's such a great dish to have on a hot summer day to use fresh summer veggies. All right, there we are, and then we can top it off with a little sprig of cilantro. And there you have it.